Hi, I'm Kubis van Rensburg. Join me now for Capturing Glory. We're going to go into the Word of God. It's time for the church to come out of the closet and become visible. You are the city, you are set on a hill, you are the light of the world. In 1994, our country went into a big transition Amen. from the apartheid regime to democracy, they say. <laughs> I don't know how much of that there is. But in any case, uh, when the elections came around about in April, uh, there was a lot of talk about persecution is now here. Politicians came from all over the world to see the bloodbath that's going to break out. Yeah. And everybody talked about it, and the malls were sold out of groceries. Yep. <laughs> because people started gathering food knowing that this is going to be troublesome times, it's going to be the great persecution, and you know, the man that's going to take over the country, if you take his name and put it in numerical form, you will find 666, you know. <laughs> That was the same for Hitler, for Mussolini, for Nixon, and all those people. And it didn't work out. And then I prophesied, it said it will not work out for South Africa either. And uh, I used to preach out a lot in churches in those days. And I preached for the three, four weeks before the election. I preached in a lot of churches from Mondays to Mondays, you know. And I only had two scriptures that I used and I prophesied. And this is the prophecy that I gave. And because it's God's word, that prophecy still stands today. Amen. Because the Bible says, so shall my word be, Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11, that go forth from my mouth. It shall do what it sends for, and it shall be prosperous therein, and it shall not return to me empty. In other words, the word of God will never be void or empty. It shall do what it was sent for. God says in his word in Jeremiah 1, verse 12, I watch over my word to perform it. Psalm 119.89 says, My word is forever settled in, the he settled in the heavens. So God's word cannot lie because Jesus is the word. The word is truth. And God is not a liar. God is not a man. Numbers 23.19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he not said and shall he not do it? Hath he not spoken and shall it not come to pass? So when God says it, it's got to be for eternity. It will not go halfway and then fail and then some politician's word will come out or some newspaper's word will come out. So we can't, you know, judge the end times or work out end times or so-called end times according to newspapers or political, political situations in governments and presidents and prime ministers. We got to work out the times by the word of God and not by circumstances, situations and what's going on in countries. Amen, amen, amen. The Middle Ages were much worse than what we have in our day. People were hung in the church plain by their necks. They had gallows in the open. Bam, there goes their head. Oh my goodness. Whose head is that? Oh, that's the guy that was nasty last night. You know, they just chopped their heads off for nothing. Witchcraft were practiced in the streets. Is there any people that know something about history? So I prophesied and I said, people, it's getting better and better. As the day comes nearer, the sun gets brighter. 
It doesn't grow dimmer. Okay? And this is the two scriptures that I used in 94 when the elections came in South Africa. And I want to stand up today and prophesy and say this is the true prophecy again for the so-called end times. The one is Jeremiah 29 verse 11. And I want to read it in the Amplified Bible if you want to go with me. It says, For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil. To give you hope in your final outcome. King James to give you an expected end of hope and peace. The longer prophecy, Isaiah chapter 60. I could quote it for you, but let's read it together. I'm going. The people want to go with me, they can shout, scream. It depends on what you expect for the end. If you expect trouble sometimes, be troubled. <laughs> if you expect the God of peace to be with you, peace be unto you. God says, I know my thoughts for you. I know the plans that I have for you. My thoughts and my plans are for welfare, for peace, for hope, to give you an expected end. So what is the expected end? End. Peace. Welfare. Oh my goodness. Huh? Romans chapter 16 says, The God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. What will he do? Let Satan rule or crush him. So, whose side are you on? If God gives us peace, then it means he will crush Satan. Underneath our feet. So, uh, you know, God says about Jesus Christ, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. And the last enemy to be conquered is? Oh, I thought so, you know. It's the first Corinthians 15. So all the enemies must be conquered. The enemies are not going to take over. They're going to be conquered. He will prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Psalm 110 says, stretch out thy rod, rule in the midst of your enemies. The church are about to rise and rule in the midst of enemies. Hmm? Why do you need light to cast out darkness? I mean, it is so simple. When God spoke to me, Oh, is it 1990? It was also 94, yes, when the joy and stuff broke out like that. You know, God said to me, I want to show you how light drives out darkness. And I took these candles that you put on a cake. You know how big they are? You know how thin they are? Five millimeters, you know? And I took that little candle and I put it in the back of our church and I lit it. Nighttime when nobody was in the church. And I switched the lights off. Bam! It was so dark. I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. I couldn't see the chairs in front of me. But I saw the little candle there in the back. And I just walked around praying. And within a while I started seeing the chairs. And before long I saw the front chairs. Before long, I could see my hand in front of my face. Same little candle burning in the back of the church. Light drives out darkness. Jesus came and he said, I am the light of the world. Then he said to the church, but now you are the light of the world. So now the great prophecy to the world. I don't care where you watch. This is the prophecy on the end days, the last days. The final outcome. Call it whatever you want to. 
I'm pushing against the resistance today and I will push all darkness out of the way. Even if I have to do it all by myself, I will do it by the grace of the Almighty God. If you want to push with me, push with me and we can all go through the gates at the same time. Here it comes. Arise, shine, for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Amen. Say, that's me. that's me. For behold, here comes the end times, my dear brothers <laughs> and sisters. For behold, the darkness <laughs> shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But Amen. the Lord shall rise upon you and His glory shall be seen upon you. Amen. Yes, yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Yes, Lord. I am one of those whose light has come and the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon me. Anybody else? Woo! Wow. And the Gentiles, that means the sinners, that means those people that have not yet found Jesus shall come to your light Amen. and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Okay, so who's going to take over, the darkness or the light? Amen. Who's going to go to who, the church to the world or the world to the church? Amen. Okay, I just thought the other day, I was watching television, so I've got a lot of time because I'm sitting a lot. <laughs> Why? Because I'm not yet as movable as you are. But I try to move as much as I can. But I do still sit a lot. Amen. Two months ago, I couldn't move. I couldn't even turn around on a bed. They had to turn me around. Doctor said, I will never move again. Here I am by the grace of the Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. So I was watching TV. And there's a lot of talk shows. Yeah, and there's a lot of millionaire shows. Who wants to be a millionaire, being a millionaire, a secret millionaire? You know, it's like, uh. so I, I was watching these programs and I noticed something and God spoke to me. I noticed on these shows, when somebody comes up on a talk show, the guy running the show stands up and the guy that's going to be on the talk show, they hug one another. And God says, there was nothing like that a few years ago. Nobody in the world hugged one another. And God said, who was hugging? The church. God said, do you see the influence of the church in the world? I said, my goodness, I never thought of that. God says, yes, that's how much light is driving our darkness. Today, everybody's hugging everybody. Even the ANC, I mean, everybody's hugging. Didn't you notice? Just for in case you didn't, I just want to declare that was God spoke to me and said, the world never did that. That's how much the church is influencing the world. So who's going to run to who? I mean, the politicians do not have answers for what's happening. Their own people are burning down their own stuff. Their own people are throwing their own school books away. I mean... I mean, you have that, you know, the world's dumbest criminals and the world's dumbest drivers and the world, you know, have you ever seen those programs? I like those type of programs, man. You see yourself many times. But in any case, <laughs> there's some stupid stuff. Yeah? And I thought, how, how dumb can you get and still breathe? by burning your own school books and throwing them and dumb. I mean, how dumb can you get throwing your own future away? So who's got the answer? The church, the church will not burn Bibles because they know this is the book of life. So they're crumbling from the inside out. So where are they going to run to? Somebody's got to have the answer. Okay, so Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 says, you are the light of the world. 
You are a city that's set on a hill. Listen to the words. You are the light of the world. Maybe we should write something down. You. Okay? That you. Are you talking to me? Yes, I'm talking to you. Okay? You. You are the light, excuse my spelling. Uh, right? A month ago I still couldn't write. You are, okay. Okay, just for the critics. You are the light of the world. You are a city set on a hill. Oh, that cannot be hidden. In other words, once you said yes to Jesus, you are burning. That's why when the world want to criticize, they got to criticize the church because you cannot be hidden. So they will never talk about themselves because they are hidden. Because everything that is done in darkness is in secret. The lot of connivers. You know? But the church can't have secret agents. Whatever you do, oh, look at them drunken son preaching in church. Telling about the bar that they have in the church. Yes, it's a Holy Ghost bar. It comes right from your belly and it flows to the outside. You drink from your own well at your own will. There's a lot of good slogans that you can make posters from and put them on your walls. Okay, So you cannot be hidden. Then it goes on to say, let your light so shine. Let your light shine in the night time. Let your light so shine. That people may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So you cannot hide your light. But you can make it shine brighter. Okay, back to Isaiah 60. Lift up your eyes round and about and see all they gather themselves together. We got to believe this prophecy. They come to you. Thy son shall come from far, and thy daughter shall be nursed to thy side. Then shall you see and flow together, and your heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto you. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto you. I think we've learned that from the book of Proverbs, that the, you know, the, the prosperity and the riches and the wealth of the wicked are laid up for the just and will eventually find its way into your hands. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Verse 7, all the flocks of Kedah shall be gathered together unto you. The rams of Nebuchadnezzar shall minister unto you. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Woo! Verse 11, and this comes from Revelation 21 and 22, for those who want to put the end times in. Therefore thy gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut by day or by night. Hmm? Why not? Because of verse 10. The sons of strangers shall build up your walls and the king shall minister unto you. For in my wrath I smote you, but in my favor have I had mercy on you. Ah. Hmm? Oh, glory, glory, glory. What can we still read? Oh, verse 14. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto you, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city. Okay, okay, for those who didn't get it, the sons of them that afflicted you shall come bending unto you, and all they that despised you shall bow themselves down at the soles of your feet. And they shall call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. They shall call you. They shall call you. 
They shall call you the city of the Lord. They shall call you Zion. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it. Mm -mm, I like it. Verse 18. Violence shall no more be heard in your land. Is anybody taking the prophecy? Okay. Wasting no destruction within thy borders. That'll be good for the new South Africa. (laughs) But thou shalt call thy wall salvation and thy gates praise. Ah. Ah. I can go on and on and on and on. But does that sound like a good prophecy? Did you hear how many times he said, the glory of the Lord shall be risen upon you, and the glory of the Lord shall rise upon you, and the glory of the Lord shall shine upon you, and people shall come to the light of the glory of the Lord. That's actually what it says. Hmm? Now just listen. I was going to read a lot of scriptures, but I'll just quote a couple, and then we'll read some more. But in Numbers 14... Moses is now about to spy the land of Canaan from Numbers 12 to 14. And he sent out 12 spies, one from every tribe. And they go to Canaan. (laughs) They see the grapes and the peaches. I mean, peaches. I mean, peaches look like pumpkins, you know. And Wow. And they look, wow. They took the binoculars away and they said, ah! <laughs> We saw the grapes. We saw the fruit. But then, ha! We saw the giants, the sons of Enoch. And we looked at ourselves and we looked like grasshoppers. In our sight, so we were as grasshoppers in their sight, you know? And so we decided, no, we can't take the land. Two guys stood up and said, you suck, man. If God says we can take the land, we'll eat them up for breakfast. I mean, maybe they didn't say it that way and so bluntly, but maybe they did it more roughly. Because the people wanted to stone them after they spoke. So they mustn't have come over very meek. They must have said it in real strong language. If God says we can take the land, we can take the land. Moses is standing there between the two groups, 10 to 1. It sounds like a horse race. But <laughs> 10 to 2. So Moses says, oh God. You know, and God says, Moses. Moses, you saw the Ten Commandments. Charles and Esther. Moses. Moses. For those who never heard it. When he met God on the mountain, the glory of God burning the fire, the bush don't want to burn. Moses comes closer. He was spying before they were spying. What's this bush? Moses. Moses. Take off the shoes from off of thy feet. Put them back, Moses. Okay. No, it wasn't that. That was years ago when I preached to young people. Huh? <coughs> Moses, I'm going to destroy these people. And I'm going to start a new nation with you, Moses. Let me just... Moses, no. No, don't destroy them. Remember when you spoke and said. Remember when you spoke and said. I'm full of mercy. And of tender kindness. I'm gracious and compassionate. I will forgive. Remember when you said that to me on the mountain? How can you now destroy them? Please, according to your great mercies and goodness, don't destroy them. God spoke to Moses and says, Truly, 
I will do exactly at your word. What was Moses' word? Just what God said. So he took the word of God, spoke it back to God, and that's what Jeremiah said. My word in your mouth is as good as my word in my mouth. So if I take the word of God and speak it, God says, I will act on your word. If it's my word. Ah, come on somebody. So we're trying to take the word of God and say, this is the prophecies on the end times. It's not darkness and gloom and doom and fires and earthquakes and, you know, wars and rumors of wars. That was for the children of Israel concerning the times of 30 till 70 AD, that 40 year period after the ascension till the burning down of Jerusalem. That was the prophecies of Matthew 24. For the house of Israel, because they rejected Christ and the Jews crucified him. And because of that, we get the prophecies there. But for the global world, God says, I'm going to have a light. There's going to be darkness, but the darkness is going to be driven out. And the people from darkness will stream to the sons of light. And they will say, this is the city of the Lord. This is Zion. We're coming to you. We're bringing even our finances to you. We want to see you take over. Hallelujah. Okay. That's Numbers 14 up to verse 20. Verse 18 through 20. But verse 21 says, But as truly as I live, God just said, Moses, I'm going to do at your word, which is actually my word. But as truly as I live, so God swears by himself because there is no greater. As truly as I live, the earth shall be filled. with the glory you're not hearing come on is there anybody in the house the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord now I want to ask is this earth filled with the glory so what are we waiting for more destruction No, Isaiah 60 says the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. So the more we shine our light, the more the glory is going to fill the earth. So we got a responsibility because the very words that Moses used in Numbers chapter 14, he says, as you spoke to me upon the mountain, you can't destroy them because when you spoke and said, the Lord is merciful and compassionate and gracious and, you know, tender kindness and that. So we got to find out where God spoke that to Moses. So he spoke that in Exodus chapter 33. And this is what happened from verse 18 right to chapter 34, verse 9. You can read the whole story there. Moses is on the mountain and God says, Moses, my presence shall go with thee wherever you go. He said, if your presence don't go with you, with us, don't let us go from here. For wherewith shall we differ from the rest of the people on the face of the earth? Is it not in that your presence go with us? God says, even this word will I fulfill because you have found grace in my sight. Moses said, if I then have found grace in your sight, show me now your glory. Have you got the word there? Glory, show me glory, 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 glory. Anybody in the house? Glory, glory, glory. Glory is more than just the light. Hmm? When Jesus turned the water into wine, the Bible says he showed forth his glory. When Lazarus was in the tomb, he said, have I not told you if you believe you would see my glory? John 1 verse 14, the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten son of God. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, he is the sole expression of the glory of God. So glory is, oh, give God the glory. Glory is worship. Glory is praise. Glory is excitement. Hmm? 
Glory is power. Glory is signs and wonders. Glory is the very presence of God. It's more than just the face of Moses shining. Oh, glory. When I really get blessed of God, I say, oh, glory. So that's why Moses could quote that word. God, you spoke to me on the mountain when I wanted to see your glory. And now God says, right, Moses, I will hide you here in the cleft of a rock. And I will let all my goodness pass before you. And here comes God. Moses says, oh, glory. And God speaks. He says, I'm merciful, gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger. Moses says, oh, glory. So later on, God wants to destroy the house of Israel. Moses says, ah, oh, you said you're merciful, full of compassion. you kind and compassionate. God says, oh, glory. Come on, anybody, just get it. God says, Moses, because of that word, I can't be filled with wrath. I can't destroy. But this is what I'm going to tell you. As sure as I live. Is God dead or alive? So what's the prophecy? My glory shall fill all the earth. All spoken to Moses and by Moses. So let's go to this Moses story. So what happened? God says, go and, you know, get some stones from the mountain, like the first stones that I gave you, and I will write again my law. So it all happened there, and Moses came down the mountain. His face was shining. The people, oh, Moses, Moses. Dims, dims. Okay. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 3. Let's look at the whole story there. Verse 5 in the Amplified says, Not that we are fit, qualified, and sufficient in ability of ourselves. Wow. Hmm? End of the verse. But our power and ability and sufficiency are from God. It is He who has qualified us, yes. making us to be fit and worthy. Yes. King James. Able ministers of the New Testament. Yes. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. The letter is the law of Moses. The Spirit is the Holy Spirit. And this is what we get in Romans 8, verse 1 to 3. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death but if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory, 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 for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? Hmm? Amplified would say, this ministry which is governed by the Holy Spirit be attended with a much greater and more splendid glory. Yeah. Glory. 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 For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. 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 Huh? Verse 17, now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Okay, <laughs> liberty. But we all, with, okay, that's the DVD that we saw once, the, the liberty, the guy was singing, liberty. And, you know, feathers started coming into the church, and gold started falling. <laughs> but we all, 
with open face. Now these people couldn't look on the face of Moses, but we now have an open face. I want to just change some doctrines here. We have an open face. Beholding as in a glass or as in a mirror would be a better translation. The glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. Now he is the exact image of God the Father. He is the sole expression of the glory. Okay, Same image from glory, the glory that Moses had, to glory, which is the glory we're now supposed to have, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So our faces are not going to shine. Let me just change this false doctrine. We're not going to walk around like a light bulb in the street. Oh, oh. What happened to that guy? His face turned into a light bulb. Imagine you walking around in the street. Like a light bulb. No? You're not going to shine. He says, our faces are open and we behold in a mirror and we are changed into the image of Jesus Christ. Did Jesus Christ walk in the street and people said, oh, light bulb, here comes Mr. Light bulb. No. They didn't even accept him as the Messiah. So he never had a shining face. So there must have been something else. It's not a legalistic thing with light bulb quibbers. Huh? Shocker. Verse 6, chapter 4. light bulb. For God. <laughs> I must behave myself. I'm preaching. Who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Has shined in our hearts. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ but we have this treasure of the glory of the light in the face of Jesus Christ in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So where's the glory? It's not shining from our faces. It's hidden in our hearts. Colossians 1 verse 26 and 27. The mystery that's been hidden throughout ages and generations has now been revealed. It's so rich in glory, which is Christ in us the hope of glory so I give you an expected end it's full of hope what hope that glory is going to fill all the earth where's this glory coming from from inside of believers we have the glory the more we do signs and wonders the more we speak the word the more we confess what God says in his word we stand with Joshua and Caleb we stand with Moses we stand with the prophets of old and we do not say what circumstances say we say what the word of God says we speak the word of the almighty and the more that people speak the word which is spirit and which is life the more the glory is going to fill all the earth and the more the glory is shining upon us the more the world is running towards the church and they bring their money they bring their children they bring their things and they say we want to be joined to you you are zion the city of the lord set on a hill man wow wow let's go to hebrews 12 I hope you're getting something from this fruit salad sermon here tonight. Mm. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 18 says, We have not come to that mountain where Moses got the law. Mm? Verse 22, But we have come to Mount Zion. Oh, is there just one person? Maybe two. 
may be through say ah 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 amen unto the city of the living god we're not going there we've come there the heavenly jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels oh ministering spirits mm. to the general assembly to the church are we now the church yes. of the firstborn and, and are written down in heaven and to God the judge of all and to the spirits Amen. of just men made perfect okay the just men made perfect their spirits in Matthew chapter 27 it says when Jesus was crucified the graves of the just were opened the saints but they did not come out until after the resurrection after the resurrection hey all those saints start appearing in the streets of Jerusalem oh i'm sure i saw elijah today no brother they saw him for 40 days i i just want to ask something for 40 days after the resurrection there must have been a shaking going on in Jerusalem because all the righteous saints started appearing in the streets of Jerusalem in other words people were walking I'm sure Moses was here today hey I'm sure I saw Joshua today you joking I saw Rahab man serious yeah man Adam was here you know saying why did I eat why did I, I mean <sighs> For 40 days they appear cool. Here they are. Now you see them now they don't. <coughs> huh? wow. Now we have come to those spirits. Wow. This is chapter 12 verse 1. Therefore since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, oh, who bore testimony of the truth. So they are called Now be Jesus with my fingers. all these saints the saints of old yeah that's all who died yeah and are righteous amen okay yeah they are called cloud of witnesses amen is that okay and they are surrounding us but we can't see them but now and then there's an appearance and you know John G Lake walks over the stage he's like, hey, hey Johnny boy <laughs> forget it just the people that know first when he says his voice or whose voice then shook the earth but now he hath promised saying yet once more i shake not the earth only but also heaven And this word yet once more signifieth now listen to this aha okay this is for television this signify the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain God in heaven help the church right now. Amen. God says I'm going to shake <laughs> shake the heavens. Amen. And those things that can mm, that can be shaken. What shall happen? Shall be removed. And those things that cannot be shaken. shall remain have you got that yes. sir on television have you got that mm-hmm. wherefore eh when we receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken so what's going to remain What will happen to the rest? Yeah. 
But that differs from what we are taught on all television stations. We hear that, you know, evil is going to remain and good is going to be removed. But here we read, evil is going to be removed and good is going to remain. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Please take us away. Please take us away. <laughs> here comes the kingdom and here we go. Oh my goodness, we just passed the kingdom. Oh Lord, put us back, put us back. <laughs> what are we praying for? What are we believing for? John the Baptist come preaching. Repent, repent for the kingdom of heaven. He is now here. Jesus comes preaching. Repent, repent for the kingdom of heaven. He is now here. Paul comes preaching. And all his letters is about the kingdom, 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 kingdom. And this is how the book of Acts close. No ending to it because it is still going on. It says, and Paul stayed in his hired house. And preached another two years on things concerning the kingdom. Amen. The book of Acts starts like this. O oh dear Theophilus, the first treatise I write unto you about all the things that Jesus started to do and speak. Amen. Appearing to them for 40 days, speaking about the kingdom. Yes. Oh. <coughs> first Thessalonians, chapter number four. Oh. Oh. Verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. A good word for asleep there is dead. I don't want you to be ignorant concerning those that are dead. So that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Oh, I thought his thoughts about us are thoughts of peace. Welfare. To give us hope and an expected end. So I want you to know you must not be like those who have no hope. So what is our hope? That in the last days, peace, welfare, all the good stuff are coming to the church. Arise, shine, your light has come. Glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hey, the world's going to run to us. It doesn't look like it now, Corvus. Oh, that's why everybody's hugging. Because the church is already influencing. That's just something small that God gave me. Right, let's close. We better do something. Don't be ignorant concerning the dead. Verse 14. For if we believe, did you see the if? Yeah. If we believe, so the question is there, do you really believe? <laughs> that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which are dead in Jesus, will God bring with him? Will he take them somewhere or bring them somewhere? Point number one, God is bringing. I thought somebody will get excited. Is there some loved one that is dead in your family? God is bringing them. Point number one. Verse 17. Let's see if somebody can catch this. Then we which are alive and remain. Amen. Did you see twice he says remain? Yes. Remain. So there's no removing. Yes. I'm speaking to the crowd, the company of the remainers. Yes. God is and remainers incorporated, incorporated unlimited. 
Hello, Remainers. Amen. Saints of God. Amen. Company of the living ones. Amen. Then we which are alive and remain Amen. shall be caught up. Amen. Oh, oh my goodness. Second uh, uh. Corinthians 2. We've got to understand the Bible with the Bible. Sorry if I keep you two minutes longer with this one scripture. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Man. I love the word. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Apocalypses of the Lord. (laughs) Can the Lord be destroyed? Come on, somebody help me. Paul says, I come to apocalypses of the Lord. Oh. I come to the destruction of the Lord. Ah, ah. The opening up of Jesus Christ. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knows such a one caught up (laughs) to the third heaven. Huh? Verse 4 he says, This man was caught up, second time, into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. In other words, those that are under the law will never understand the word caught up. Thank you, Tinas. Because you can speak grace as much as you want to. But if you at the same time preach rapture, you're still a lawman. Because for the rapture doctrine, you got to do everything right. Because if you step out of line, you miss the rapture. And the only way you can be saved after the rapture is with your own blood. And without the Holy Spirit because he's taken away with the rapture. If for 2,000 years the Holy Spirit couldn't convict you of sin. And for 2,000 years the blood of Jesus couldn't save you. How then in a tribulation period will you be saved without the Holy Spirit and by your own blood? It's sick. It's blasphemous. It's an adulterous doctrine. Sorry for the harsh words. But Paul says, I was caught up. I was caught up. Oh my goodness, where's Paul? I mean, here's the company of guys on the way to Damascus from Tarsus. And bam, on the way. Did you see Paul fly? He's gone. No. No. Paul was lying on the ground. But yet he was caught up. No. Have you got the word caught up now out of the Bible? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Okay? Pause. Together with them... In the clouds. Huh? Number three. We that are alive and remain shall be caught up. For together with them in the clouds. We just read Hebrews chapter 12. Since we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses. Okay, so here's the cloud. We can't see them now. So a day will come when God will sound a certain noise to those that are dead in Christ. And bam, they shall come forth. Woo! And they are so caught up Because they're not spirits anymore. They got their bodies back. Remember you put their body in the ground? 
Now all of a sudden, here's this body back, the spirit is back in this body, and they say, Mama, Sonny, Grandma. And they caught up, ah, I haven't seen you for three generations. Oh man, it's ages since I last heard about you. Wow, they are caught up. And all of a sudden, we are changed. 1 Corinthians 15, in a twinkling of an eye, we will be changed. And we look at ourselves and, my goodness, I put my hand right through the pulpit. Ah, I walk through the door without opening it. Man, and I'm caught up together with them in the clouds. Them in the clouds are caught up, they got their bodies back. Them in the remaining situation are caught up with them in the clouds. Get the truth of the word. To meet the Lord in the air. Mm, That word air is not the word heaven. That word air is to breathe. So shall we meet the Lord in this breathing. (sighs) The guy who wrote the song does not know till today what he wrote. When he wrote, this is the air I breathe. His holy presence. This is the air I breathe. So shall we meet the Lord in this air, in this breath. You come into a place, you say, man, the air is electrified in this house. Man, that guy's got an air around him. Man, when that guy comes into the house, there's just an air around him. So these guys come and there's an air around them because they got their bodies back. We are changed, so we got an air around us. They are caught up what's happening to them. We are caught up together because we see what's happening to us. So in this air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. So we shall never come out of the caught up experience again. We shall never come out of this air again. So this anointing, this powerful breathing, this walking through walls and appearing in places will never go again. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. And this is the truth about the rapture. 